Well, thanks to our heroes, Peter and the bird and the cat, the wolf has been securely tied up. But now what do we do? Luckily, some hunters came out of the forest and perhaps they can help Peter and the bird and the cat get the wolf to the zoo. You can tell that they're coming because you can hear them shooting their guns, portrayed by the timpani in the orchestra, and the triumphant procession by the trumpets. So let's learn a little bit more about timpani and the trumpet in the orchestra. Hi, I'm Daniel Lewis, principal trumpet of the Springfield Symphony Orchestra, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about my instrument, the trumpet, how it works, how we get sounds on it, and how it fits into the orchestra. The first thing to know about the trumpet is that it's a wind instrument. This means that we use our wind or our breath or our air to make sounds come out of the trumpet. The trumpet is also from the brass family of instruments. The brass instruments in the orchestra include the trumpet, the trombone, the French horn, and the tuba. These instruments are called brass instruments because the instruments themselves are made of brass, which is a type of metal. Another thing to know about the trumpet is that it's the smallest instrument in the brass family. If you know the other instruments of the brass family, the trombone, the tuba, and the horn, you know they're all bigger than the trumpet. This means that the trumpet is going to play the highest notes of the brass family of instruments. Now to play music on our brass instruments, we need a little bit more than just our air to make a sound. If I try playing the trumpet just using my air, it'll sound a little bit like this. In order for us to get a real sound out of the instrument, we need a vibration. On brass instruments, we do this by buzzing our lips. It sounds a little bit like this. If I do that same thing into the mouthpiece, now if I do that same thing into the mouthpiece and then into the trumpet, it sounds like this. So this is how we actually make notes and sounds on the trumpet. Now the last part of the trumpet that you maybe have noticed at this point are these buttons. We call these buttons valves. And using these valves to change the notes, it allows us to play all the notes we need to be able to play to make music on the trumpet. So that's a little bit about how the trumpet works and how it fits into the orchestra. Now I want to tell you a little bit about how I think the trumpet fits into the story Peter and the Wolf. In this musical tale, the trumpet represents the hunter. Now a hunter needs to be sneaky and patient. To me, I imagine the sound of a hunter hunting to be suspenseful. To help with this, Prokofiev, the composer, wrote the trumpet at times during this piece to be played with a mute. And I'm gonna play a little bit for you in just a couple seconds here, and I'm gonna play it with that mute so you can hear what it sounds like. Playing with this mute helps the trumpet to better get that eerie character it needs to better tell the story of Peter and the Wolf. Hello, my name is Fred Theergartner, Principal Timpanist for the Springfield Symphony Orchestra and recently appointed as Hunter and Shotgun for Peter and the Wolf. I'm here today with my hunting dog, Tasha. Say hello, girl. Well, she's a, a lab, but she won't be retrieving anything today because we're hunting wolf. Timpani, sometimes referred to as kettle drums, had one of the oldest origins of musical instruments dating back to ancient times. Words associated with timpani are copper, like these copper kettles on my drums, low-voiced, 
bottom brass note, mallets, heads, and pedal. The best timpani are made out of copper and have beautiful resonance and sound. Timpani in general are low voiced and the lowest drums are very large. Many times, timpani parts are written as the bass voice of the brass section. Timpani are struck with mallets of various sizes and felt hardnesses and have heads that are made of mylar and in some cases calfskin. The heads I have on my drums are mylar, a type of plastic. Now the different mallets that I would use in a concert would be any of these and I have other ones that go in between these, but these are the hardest. These are still hard, but a little less volume. A medium, medium soft, and soft. Modern timpani parts incorporate quick tuning changes, which are done by using the tuning pedal and the tuning gauges. Let me show you how they work. And I also use the tuning gauge to know what note for quick changes, what note I'm going to. Previous to mechanical timpani like these, tuning, gauge, tuning changes had to be done by the use of T-handles. So there'd be T-handles on each of these and the player would have to go across the drum to change the pitch. Needless to say, that was a quite a bit more difficult to do than it is today with mechanical timpani and pedals. Now various sounds can be achieved on any of the drums by the use of different hardnesses of mallets which we showed you before and also different places uh, hitting on the drums. Timpani best represent the hunter and the shotgun through the peril created by the dynamic musical part and the, and the full dark sounds of the timpani. Let's see if we can catch us a wolf, shall we? Actually, I'm a bad shot. Looks like the wolf's life's been spared. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We'll leave the light on. Just then, Peter Hood gunfire from far away saw flashes of smoke in the distance. Through the trees, he caught a glimpse of red caps and flashing eyes. Hunters rolled out of the woods. You see. Hunters had been following the wolf's trail, too. The noise startled the wolf so much that he opened his mouth and out fell the duck. Confused, as usual. The hunters drew their guns, not sure whether to shoot the duck or the wolf. Hey, what are you doing? Don't shoot! Anything! By this time, as you could quite imagine, 
The duck had had just about enough for one day. He was so happy that he, well, he danced? However, is not a ballet fan. Oh no! Now help us take the wolf to the zoo. You see, the wolf will be safe at the zoo, and so will everyone else. took complete charge of the situation. And the hunters started to build a cage for the wolf. Peter, oh. you disobeyed me again, didn't you? But we... but... I got the wolf, didn't I? Yes. Yes, you did. But what would have happened if you hadn't caught the wolf? What if the wolf had caught you instead? Well... The meadow is a dangerous place. I keep telling you that over and over and over again, but you just don't pay any attention to me. I'm... You just... I'm... I'm sorry. But aren't you proud of me? No. No, I'm not. Now you listen to me. Even a little? Well, a little maybe, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yes, yes, I am, Peter. And uh, maybe, maybe, maybe even a lot. <laughs> Come on, Grandfather. It won't be a real parade without you. Uh, I love you, Peter. I really do. <laughs> You should have seen the incredible excitement as Peter led the colorful parade. Everyone was celebrating. Almost everyone. And of course, the bird joined in too. For she had something even more fantastic to celebrate. Her six new babies, who had hatched amidst all the excitement. Yes, everyone was celebrating. That was, except for the duck. I guess his first day of spring had been pretty terrifying. And now, Peter spotted him hiding in the reeds, alone and scared. Hey, what are you doing over there? Everything turned out okay, didn't it? Listen, you'll never have to be scared again, because I'll always be here to protect you.
there you have it. Peter and his friends have safely gotten the wolf to the Springfield Zoo, where he's living happily and healthily to this very day. Well, we hope you've enjoyed getting to know the instruments of the orchestra as we've told this wonderful story of Peter and the Wolf as set to music by Sergei Prokofiev. Thank you for your attention, for participating in our wonderful Peter and the Wolf project. Stay happy and healthy, wash your hands, and we'll see you again soon when the concerts resume with your Springfield Symphony Orchestra.